Hi, as well. Hope you're well, and welcome to a special video, uh, kind of a birthday special uh, message video, if you want to call it that. So, uh, before I start, uh, let me just say that usually around my birthday, uh, what I do is I do a quick video. I haven't done this for quite a long time, but I usually like to make a small uh, little message or video just to share with you something important that I've learned, which I can pass on to you. Um, I'm hoping it won't be too boring. I'll try and make it as interesting as I can. But first of all, let me just say thank you very much for being loyal subscribers and loyal viewers of our videos. It really means a lot to me. So thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate it. And by the way, before I begin, let me just say that this is actually the first time I've driven my car for a very long time. Last time I drove my car was back in March. And it's good to be out here just driving uh, the car again. By the way, um, where I am right now is quite a lot of people hanging out. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of crowds of people around, which I don't like personally. I don't like crowds. I don't like human beings. Yeah, exactly. So bottom line is I, I'm trying to keep my distance from everybody out there. I kind of preferred the way it was when there was nobody around in the streets. Anyway, there it is. Anyway, guys, uh, again, as I was saying before, today is my birthday. And yeah, I mean, I'm not somebody who celebrates his birthday. I know a lot of people love to celebrate their birthdays. I'm not one of them. I actually despise the idea of even thinking about my birthday because it's another reminder that I'm over 40. Uh, by the way, if you don't understand what I'm talking about, if you're under the age of 40, if you're in your 20s or 30s, just wait until you get to your 40s and you'll know what I mean. Um, in fact, every day is a constant reminder that you're middle-aged. So it's not something that I'm looking forward to every day when I reach my birthday. <laughs> anyway, so going back to uh, my birthday message, what was I going to talk about? So I was going to share with you something important that I've learned something that really means a lot to me that actually might be of help to you as well. And again, it's nothing to do with Bitcoin or stock markets or charts, nothing like that. Actually, it's something much more simple, something much more important than that, I think. So what I was going to talk about was something quite personal to me, uh, to my life at the moment here, and actually something many of you could relate to. So about a year ago, I think it was, um, I found out that my dad, my father, is suffering from early dementia. So a doctor told me uh, quietly to myself, that, hey, you know what, your dad probably has early Alzheimer's and early dementia. And uh, I kind of, uh, was, I was very surprised when I learned that because I just thought it was, um, I, I didn't realize it was that serious. So obviously I'm sure that you, like me, love your dad. And when you hear something like that, it, uh, it terrifies you, it kind of upsets you. But even more terrifying for me was the fact that my grandmother, or my dad's mother, um, she died of Alzheimer's too about a few years ago. So that means two family members of mine now have Alzheimer's. Well, one of them passed away, my grandmother. And according to the doctor, the neurologist uh, who told me this, this is genetic uh, and very likely I could get it in about a, you know, 20, 30 years time, you know, when I get to my 70s. So, <laughs> I mean, I can laugh about it now, but I can tell you when I was thinking about this some uh, months ago, about a year ago, it wasn't that funny. Um, so, you know, I have about a 50% chance probably of getting Alzheimer's in about 30 years, unless some miracle happens in medical science, who knows, we'll see. But again, that's a story so far. Um, now, why am I telling you all this? Because, you know, it kind of, um, it kind of is a joke that life plays on you. I mean, look at my dad, for example. My dad is someone who's very intellectually curious. Whenever he wants to, whenever he doesn't understand something, he wants to learn it. So, for example, when we were watching movies together, if he didn't understand something in the movie, a concept or an idea or some word, he would look it up trying to understand what it meant. So he's someone who's very intellectually curious, wants to learn more ideas, you know, constantly feed his brain. It's something that I've actually learned from my dad. You know, I always want to learn new things as well. And life plays a joke on you, unfortunately. And there it is. My dad, who someone who wants to feed his brain, has now got a disease which is destroying his brain slowly. And it's something that I might get in about 30 years time, potentially. And, you know, you, you get to think at some point in your life, you know, what is the point of all of this? What, what is the point of learning things? What is the point of anything in your life if in, in about 30 years, your brain is going to slowly deteriorate and destroy? So, you know, that's the way it is. And, you know, I'm sure you've felt this in your life at some point when you think about your own life or the life of others around you. I'll give you another example. A good friend of mine, a doctor, um, fantastic guy, a great doctor. He was very young in his mid-30s. And also had a child and very religious, uh, someone who loved Jesus. He gave his life to his religion and to his profession as a doctor. And let me tell you, in, in his mid-30s, uh, he died of cancer. And I was very shocked about that. Uh, you know, I mean, this is someone who, if he had lived as a doctor, could have saved many lives. I mean, just think of how many lives he could have saved as a doctor. And what was the point of it all? All that studying, all that hard work. And then he died of cancer at the age of 35. Uh, it just seems a waste of life. So I'm sure at some point you must have thought to yourself, you know, what is the point? What is the point of anything, in fact? Uh, what is the point of even trying? Uh, life just plays a cruel joke on everybody at some point. Now, I want to talk to you about this particular philosopher who had an interesting solution to all this. His name is um, Arthur Schopenhauer. 
one of my favorite philosophers and thinkers. Arthur Schopenhauer, for those of you not familiar with him, he is what's known as a pessimistic philosopher, as a pessimist. Um, and I won't go into all the details as to why that is, but let's just say that uh, Schopenhauer believed that uh, everything, in, everything in the world, everything that exists, has a will to live, a will to life. Um, so whatever that exists, we, you, everything in the world has a will to life. And Schopenhauer believed this will to life was negative. It was evil. And Schopenhauer argued that because this will to life, this will to live, is evil, therefore it must be rejected. It must be denied. So essentially he believed that this will to live, the will to life, must be rejected in order to alleviate the suffering in the world. Because this will to live is the reason for all the suffering in the world. As an example, I mean, just take a look, for example, the virus situation in the last uh, few months. Um, how does the virus exist in the first place? The virus exists by living off another human being. In other words, the human being, us, we're the host. So this virus only gets to live by feeding on us, by feeding our, on our life source. And the same thing could be said about us, us human beings. I mean, uh, our existence, uh, our will to live, directly impacts other people. So what often happens is our own will to exist, our own will to life, often causes suffering to other human beings, other people, other living beings as well. So, um, I mean, this is essentially what Schopenhauer is talking about. The will to life itself is evil and is negative, and it causes suffering to others and other beings. Now, what was Schopenhauer's solution to all of this? It's quite a radical one. Schopenhauer argued that this will to life must be negated. It must be rejected. So, <laughs> so that's pretty drastic when you think about it. And Schopenhauer also said that there is no point to life. There is no point to any existence. It's all vanity. In fact, there are two chapters in his book um, I highly recommend you read. One is called The Vanity of Existence, and the other one is called On the Suffering of the World. Uh, two very interesting chapters. Even if you don't agree with his conclusions, it's really interesting reading. And anyway, so that was Schopenhauer's conclusion, that there is no point to life, there is no point to anything, the will to life is negative, it's evil, and it must be negated. Now, if you don't agree with his conclusions, by the way, you're not alone. Because one particular philosopher, his name is Friedrich Nietzsche, Nietzsche originally was a student of Schopenhauer, but then he rejected Schopenhauer. So Nietzsche's response to Schopenhauer was that, okay, so what if life has no purpose? You must give life purpose. You must give life your own life meaning. And life must not be rejected. The opposite, life must be affirmed. So according to Nietzsche, life is the most important and significant thing we have. Because what is the opposite? Opposite is death. And Nietzsche argued, and I agree with him on this, that we must embrace life. We must embrace everything that is life-enhancing and negate and, in fact, reject anything that is life-negating. In other words, anything in your life that reduces your power, reduces your strength, reduces your happiness, must be rejected and negated, according to Nietzsche. So that's where you see a difference between Nietzsche's philosophy and Schopenhauer's philosophy. However, guys, even though I disagree with Schopenhauer, having said that, there is something in Schopenhauer's philosophy which is quite attractive and is quite addictive, and I kind of understand this point. When Schopenhauer says, look, there is no point to anything, when there is no point at all to suffering, to existence, Sometimes in your life you agree with it. I mean, the pointlessness of certain things that happen in your life, with your family, with the suffering of people around you, you know, it doesn't make any sense. Anyway, guys, um, even though I don't agree with Schopenhauer on this point, on the pointlessness of existence, but I actually think there are certain passages in his book uh, by Schopenhauer that are really fascinating and interesting. I want to share with you one of the most uh, beautiful passages in this book, and this actually goes to my birthday message, which I got there in the end. So I want to read you this very small section here in his book. By the way, one of the great things about both Nietzsche and Schopenhauer is that they both write in a very easy style. If you've never read anything by Schopenhauer or Nietzsche, I highly recommend it because they write in very small uh, sort of passages like this. So when you pick up uh, any books by Schopenhauer or Nietzsche, you'll find that they break down the sections into small bits and small chunks so you can actually read them and then take a break and come back later to read the next bit. Especially if you, like me, don't have a lot of time reading, you know, so that's a good thing. So in this section of Schopenhauer's book on the vanity of existence, in section four of his book, here's what he says. To attain something desired, is to discover how vain it is, how pointless it is, and why, though we live our lives in expectation of better things, we often at the same time long regretfully for what is past. And it makes a good point here because we do spend a lot of time being obsessed about the future or the past. You know, often, I'm sure you've done this, we keep thinking about what happened in the past, uh, often with regrets. Oh, I wish I'd done that differently. I wish I'd done this differently in the past. Or it could be about thoughts about the future. That's why you hear a lot of people saying, well, I want to have a better car. I want to have a better girlfriend. I want to have a, a better a career, better job, things like that all the time. So a lot of our obsessions, a lot of people's obsessions and thoughts are about the future or the past. And then he says this, he says, the present, on the other hand, is regarded as something quite temporary. 
and serving only as the road to our goal. And that's another good point. We don't think the present moment is that significant. It's, it's actually something quite boring or mediocre. And then he says, that is why most men discover when they look back on their life that they have the whole time been living at interim, in other words, temporarily, and are surprised to see that which they let go by so unregarded and unenjoyed was precisely their life, was precisely that in expectation of which they lived. So that's a very powerful passage, um, very powerful section in his, um, in his book. So what I think Schopenhauer is saying there is saying that, look, we spend so much of our time being obsessed about the future and the past that we don't often think about the moment we're living in right now, the very present moment, the now, as being very significant, as being important. And it's only after some time has passed, several hours, several days or years has passed, that we look back on our life and think, oh, man, I had all the opportunity and all the great things in my life back then, and I didn't realize it. I'm sure you've done this as well. Uh, I'm sure I'm not the only one. Um, I'm sure this has happened to you, or maybe you're in a train or you're walking the street and then uh, maybe an attractive, good-looking uh, woman passes by you and they smile at you and you smile back. And then you think to yourself, maybe I should go and speak to her. And then at that moment, there's a voice comes in your head, very annoying, ridiculous voice that says in your head, nah, maybe you shouldn't do that. Maybe if you go and speak to her, she will reject you, or maybe uh, she'll think you're weird, or maybe you might freak her out. You know, any kind of excuse, that voice comes in your head and says as to not go and do something, which you probably should do. And then after a few hours or a few days later, you think, oh man, I wish I'd gone and talked to her. I wish I actually said something. I wish I'd just said hello or something. So, you know, this happens to all of us. When we look back on our life, we look back at the past and realize that that very moment that we had at that time, at that very moment, we could have done something. We had an opportunity. We didn't take the opportunity and how lucky we were at that point in time. I'll give you another example. Right now I can pick up the phone and I can speak to my mom and dad. Now, that is not such an amazing thing, right? But the fact is, guys, 20 years from now, that is probably not an opportunity for me because 20 years from now, I'm, I can imagine neither one of my parents will probably be alive. So I'll look back. So Alessio in 20 years will probably look back on this moment right now and think, wow, how lucky I was, how lucky I am right now that I can just pick up my phone and speak to my parents anytime I want. But 20 years from now, I can't do that. So I think what Schopenhauer is driving at here in this very beautiful passage, which even though I don't agree with everything he says about you know his pessimistic outlook, I think he's right about this, that we often spend our lives too obsessed about the past and about the future, and we don't actually care that much about the significance of now, about the present moment. Because, guys, right now is actually a very special moment, and we can do anything. Um, in fact, let me give you another quote, fantastic quote by Steve Jobs before he died. Steve Jobs, before he passed away, he said these words, it doesn't matter to me about being the richest man in the cemetery. What matters to me is knowing I've done something wonderful. That is a very powerful quote there from Steve Jobs. By the way, someone once said to me that only rich people can say things like that, like Steve Jobs. I don't agree with that. I think Steve Jobs realized, as much as Schopenhauer realized, that it doesn't matter how successful you are, how rich you are. What really matters is not all that money and the success. What matters is you can wake up every morning knowing you've done something great or you're going to do something wonderful that day. So guys, I would say this. If there's one message I can leave you for my birthday today, is simply that, as Schopenhauer says, the present moment, this very moment right now, could be very precious, could be very significant. If there's one thing you can do right now, it's probably just do something wonderful, something great. Because... 10, 20 years from now, you might look back on this very moment and realize how lucky you were. Again, how those very important opportunities that you had was right now, this very moment. So, for example, that thing you could do today could be just picking up your phone and talk to someone you love, someone you care about. Again, it could be your mom and dad. It could be someone in your family. I heard recently, by the way, guys, that because of this virus situation, there's a lot of people out there who are living alone. Uh, a lot of folks, unfortunately, don't have the luxury of living with other people. A lot of older people, for example, have been isolated, living on their own. Actually, could be young, could be old people living alone. So, guys, if you know anybody out there who's living alone, living in isolation, you know, pick up the phone and talk to them. And that one phone call could be just the one thing they need today. So, guys, there it is. We got there in the end in this message. Uh, it took a while. But I want to, guys, thank you very much indeed for being subscribers of this uh, channel and watching my videos. Uh, thank you so much indeed. It really means a lot to me. Uh, thank you all of you for watching this video as long as you have until the end. And I want to wish you a great day. And let's make this moment, this very present moment, a very precious one, a very important one. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye for now.